Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here, and welcome to the final part of the Skrillex bass sound reproduction, part five. Um, <clears throat> in the last couple of tutorials, we've been messing around with the um, with Massive and Operator and and Zebra, and so far we've got this. And this is what we're trying to recreate. So the only last couple of things that I have to do is basically mix it, get it all sounding tidy and together, because at the moment it doesn't sound um, <clears throat> how it should. And I've just got a couple more sounds to make. So first of all, I've got this sound. This thing. So what I'm going to do for that <coughs> is um, bounce this scream sound. But I'm going to bounce it without an LFO on it. So I'll just move this sound over here. And we'll just take the LFO off this filter. And play it. Cool, so that sounds alright. And then I'm just going to right click on this channel and go freeze track. I'm just going to freeze it and I'll right click again and just go flatten. So we now have that sound bounced into audio. And now I'm going to chuck this sound into a sampler by just creating a MIDI track and just dragging this sound straight down here into the um, into where it says drop MIDI effects, audio effects, instruments or samples. I'll just drop it there and now we have it in a simpler. And now, if I have a look at this and I just right click on it and go simpler to sampler, it converts the simpler into a sampler and now all I have to do is create a MIDI clip, create a C3 note because that's where the fundamental or natural pitch of the sampler lies. Now I'll rename this track Pitch Down or something. And um, I guess we'll pitch it down by about five semitones which is the default. And We'll see how this sounds. So it's close. And I'll turn the filter, I'll turn the sampler up. So now for these last couple of growls, I'll create another MIDI channel and I've got to drop uh, Massive into this channel again. And I'm going to create a couple of MIDI clips. So we need one there. So we need two MIDI clips there and there. Well, they can be the same MIDI clip, I guess. And we'll just create a couple of notes. Create a couple of low G sharps. And I'll just get these sitting right. Sweet, so that's all good. And I'll call this channel IEI because it's going to sound like that. So now if we have a listen to Massive, if we have a look at Massive, oscillator 1. Um, I'll make this crude if I can find that because I think that's what I used for it. There we go, crude. And for oscillator 2, I'll use uh, another one of those grown oscillators. I'll use grown uh, 4. <coughs> and for oscillator 3, I'll use uh, dirty PWM. And I'll put that on formant and hopefully we can get it sounding right. So I'll open up the amps and I'll open up the envelope. So that sounds pretty dirty. I'll try a couple of lower notes and see how that sounds.
That sounds alright. For some reason, there was some sub coming out of nowhere. I don't know what was happening there. Anyway, we'll put it on the scream filter, and then <coughs> I'll turn the cutoff up, and I'll turn the scream up, and the resonance up just a little bit. And then on insert one, we'll put a bit crusher. I'll turn the dry wet to about 50% and the crush to about 50%. And on insert two, I'll insert the hard clipper and we'll put the dry wet on 100% and the drive on about 30%. And um, on the filter, I'm going to modulate the cutoff with the LFO and we'll put the LFO intensity at about halfway roughly, maybe that much. And then I'll have the LFO synced to eighth notes. So that's kind of what we want. Try pitching some of these down. No. So just messing with all the little, um, <clears throat> all the little uh, wavetable positions. Gets it sounding a little bit dirtier. And then I'm going to put my homemade valve filter, which can be found in one of these racks on it. So uh, where is it? There we are, my vocal rack. I'll copy that. I'll just paste it there. And we'll automate this. I'll have to put this in a rack of its own and I'll call this one vocal and then I'll create another chain and just call that dry and turn the vocal down so we get something like that and then after the vocal filter I'm going to EQ it so I'll just drop an EQ down <coughs> and I'm going to cut some of the higher mids by quite a bit and I'll have a bit higher of a Q. So now I want to layer that sound with another sound. So I've got that one and now I want to create um, another MIDI clip and I'll call this one, whoops, I'll call this channel Dirty Growl. And basically what I'm going to do here is um, try and recreate another growl basically. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'll actually I'll bounce this as audio, so I'll take this II thing, call it Dirty Growl, and I'll bounce this II thing down into audio. And we'll have a listen. So, put a fade in there. Um, so this is basically just to create a bit of grit and dirt underneath it. So I'll try pitching that down and putting it on Complex Pro. No. So I could try putting the valve filter on that as well. So it's being like double valve filtered. Just get rid of the dry chain. And we can see how that sounds. So that layered with the other one. Just adds a little bit underneath it. So we end up with this now as a whole. It's not really going to sound like it because of how quickly I've tried to do it all. <laughs> So yeah, that sounds nothing like it should, but now we're going to mix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to go to my mixer window actually, because it's a bit of a pain to mix in that window. And I'm going to turn everything all the way down 
and then I'm going to start turning stuff up. So we'll start with this Dow Dow thing. So I'll turn that up to maybe here. So really quiet. And then we'll send it to some New York compression. And then I'll also send it to some high compression. So it sounds all right. Um, I'll group this bass as well so we can just listen to that on its own. And I'll just call this bass so we can just solo it and listen to it. Cool, so now the WOW 1 8 um, So I'll turn this up roughly around here. And I'll send it to the New York compression again. Then send it to some high compression. And then the same with this scream filter thing. Send that to New York compression. And high compression. So basically everything gets compressed together, so that helps um helps it all glue together a bit better. And then Scream 16th is pretty similar. Have a listen to that. I'll turn that up to about maybe 16. And then turn the New York compression up. So I might just edit this sound. Sounds pretty good. And the pitch down. Send that to some mids as well. So now I mix these growls together, see how they sound. So you can see how it starts to sound a lot better once we start adding in all this compression. Again, I'm mixing in headphones, so my judgment's a little bit impaired, but um, it's starting to sound better to me in headphones. And somebody commented on the original YouTube video of this actually and said, can you show us how, to, how the professionals use compressors? And I'd, I'd say this is pretty close to how they would go about it, a lot of parallel compression. That sounds pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'll send the entire bass send to compression as well. First of all, I'd put a limiter right over this whole bass send. So it's all the same volume. 
No, I'd send that to New York compression. And then the last thing that we have to do is create a new MIDI track. Uh, we'll just put a version of Operator in there. And we pretty much just have to write the whole lot of MIDI down again, but um, in sub. So we'll just create some big sub notes. So just duplicate that. Here. I'll just duplicate that because we're going to move them all down an octave. Um, move all of these notes down a whole octave or a couple of octaves possibly. Let's have another listen. <laughs> So I'll move this all down a couple of octaves. We'll just call this sub and send that to New York compression. And yeah, that's uh, in a nutshell, that's basically how I created um, the Skrillex bass lines that I did. Um, although that was a much rushed version, so it doesn't really sound the same. So if you listen to the Skrillex version now. <laughs> as opposed to this. So yeah, it doesn't really sound the same, but if we go and have a listen to one that I spent a bit more time on <coughs> and didn't write in headphones, um, then you'll see that I, you can actually get it pretty close by using the same ideas that we just used there. So I'll just open up this other file. And we'll play this. So this is the original Skrillex tune. And this is the one that I made. So it's pretty similar, and um, yeah, that's about as, as close as I could get it. I spent a couple of hours doing that, rather than kind of just spending an hour explaining it. So hopefully, um, from the ideas that I've explained, you can recreate something in this same vein. If you have any more questions, email me at mrbill at mrbillstunes.com, or just email me through the contact form at my website at mrbillstunes.com and um, I'll try and help you as much as you can. So hopefully you enjoyed 
that tutorial and um yeah go to mrbillstunes.com if you want to download this um this live pack and have a bit more of a look obviously the skrillex tune might be in there but um everything else will be in there and you can uh, mess with it as much as you want and if you create anything cool out of it let me know send me a link so yeah cheers hopefully you enjoyed that check out mrbillstunes.com catch you later